First, before we get going, let's go down here to the palette here for just a minute. Let me talk to you about colors I put out. I put out Naplo Red. Now this time, you know, a lot of times you see me use the Naplo Red light. But I put out Naplo Red this time because I'm going to be taking my colors towards those burnt umbers and purple colors into the mix. And so the Naplo Red makes better colors on that side than this does. This color leaning slightly to the yellow gives you really toned uh, purple colors and his purple colors have a lot of depth into it so we'll use that. I'm going to have another color out which uh, and it will will you know do will help the purples quite a bit. Let's use and again my canvas is all out here. One of the things that I did that you probably noticed on the uh, close-up of it is I went through and I marked each of the the uh, the pansies here as to their color whether they're blue and blue and white and white. You look at you know because he's a casual painter and it's you know he paints this in his mind and he doesn't use as much as a pattern on a sketch sometimes he uses the sketch but very seldom and uh, he, he's painting in his mind but for us that are going to emulate it we can get lost in all of this really easy and he's not worried about doing that he's you know keeping a casual so we want to be able to get a casual edge to it but also stay um you know, it, without getting too confused. You get confused and then you'll start getting stiff. So one of the ways just to put a little color mark in there so that you know, okay? And also, let it be yours. You can change a few things from time to time. Now, what's going to be the first step? First step is that then there's a lot of the Impressionists that believe, and he's not an Impressionist, he's a Romanticist, up into the Impressionist. Uh, I was studying another brand new Impressionist I'd never seen before, um, last night and it was fantastic. I was going to print off one of his um, one of his paintings, his, his self portrait, and uh, I thought, well, I'm going to I'm going to do that after you know after this. What I want to do with this class is I want to paint this painting today. Then I want to show you some finishing up and some framing and all that kind of stuff that we can do here. And I'm going to take a little bit of my blue. Now this will darken and cool the color here, and you'll see this is where we get. Some of those beautiful, you know, you look at that that tone, okay, so here's our here's our, our board, you know. We're gonna be able to here if we warm this up right into here like this, you're gonna start to see some of those tones. Look at those tones sitting right down in there and there. Those are those tones. So I'm gonna head close and I have my board set right up over there where I can look at it. I'm gonna head close to that. I'm gonna take some thin one, really water this out. Here, like this we'll come up here to the to the canvas here and I'm just gonna wash this right over the canvas and I want to use quite a bit of water so put some on and let this just because we're not looking to uh, so lots and lots and lots of water put lots of water with this we're not looking to uh, you know base coat what we're looking at doing is toning the canvas so put this on the other way to do it is that I do a lot of times is put some on and then I'll add my spray bottle to it here too and move this around. Now, you know, your canvas, I don't, you know, the, the prepping color that I have here, I don't have it really prepped, you know, real, with a lot of color or anything because I didn't want to fill up the grain of the canvas. Start identifying some of the yellows. Now, I'm going to first take out my yellow oxide and I'm going to tone this yellow oxide down just a bit. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna. A nice, beautiful tone for this is any kind of purple color, which is what he's using in here. So if I take this blue and this violet together right into here and make this kind of purple color. Well, purple, the purple, the violet color is a natural, uh, it's, it's a complement to what we have going on here. And see how that just tones that and grays that down real, real quick here. And then... If I add a, a bit of white to this particular color here, just like this, you'll see kind of where we're going to be going later on in the in the class. You see that color? That's the color that's right there. See? That's that's how he's toning. So, so I'm going to change the yellow up a bit, get a little more yellow oxide into this, and just push that around a bit so that you don't have just solid that tone. That's what you want is this modeling of this tone. That's what's going to be very important, you know, through the whole the whole parts of this painting. And even though we'll cover this all up, I'll just drag, drag some of that around and everything like that. What that does is that kind of fills up your bouquet here. Uh, 
into the negative space areas with some of these colors. Now, you know, uh, um, impressionists and stuff would make more marks, would have a little bit more, you know, stuff going on, but that'll get us, that'll get us started here right now. Straight line, I, I don't know, I just get, you know, I look at this, I, I think this plinth, of course, he's the master, uh, you know, but I think this plinth gets a bit distracting. He should have straightened it out a bit, but, you know, this is the whole concept of it is to be this uh, casual so you know roll my brush and pick up some of that other color there there and just make sure you get rid of all those little holidays so you, you get rid of that some of that um, those edging stuff there now I'm just going to uh, grab some of this color sometimes I'll grab a little water like I just did there I'm going to grab some of this color and we're going to push this right up into our composition here up into the cast shadow side of our composition so we'll carry that color so it just doesn't those colors just don't show up right up there into the front we'll push that right up into into there and let's go right up underneath here so we have this little white bit right there let's go right up underneath our flowers here for a second and you really should or what I try to do today is go into the flower just a little bit but this is the contact what we call the contact shadow area of the painting very important area of the painting it's where most of our contrast has got to go and a matter of fact if you when you study shadows and I did and I used to teach shadows for years and years ago for a long, you know a lot of times in a lot of different situations and teach about the different values and warm and cool elements of it reflected light elements that are in shadows and everything and now you know he he knows all that he clearly knows all of that in his painting but he doesn't express all that always the thing is broken color is that it it uh, you know it looks dark and stuff here but they're all different colors and that's the secret of painting rocks like we learned in the landscape class you know that's how I paint rocks that's how we do so many different things and paint beautiful skies with broken color well here you're using backgrounds and painting that now we've got to think about our through light coming back up through here so let's take some of our yellows and our burnt siennas here and we want to tone this down now what are we toning it down with some of our purples this is some of the same colors here we want this to be a little more toned maybe a bit of that red in there and we've got to be a little lighter just a bit lighter than what we were using before here let's get a bit more of that red some of that light through here and let's find a good base here for some of our through light let's see where we are if I'm looking through this, let's put this up on a edge here and just see what about where I am. This is about a value six, five to a six right there. See, always reference this value that we're in here. Look across to see where I'm at. Let's just see where I'm at right in there in that tone. And he's just, I'm right about this right value. It will dry a little darker, so I have to go up a bit more. So let's just adjust that right now. Let's take it up a value or so higher here and he's a bit more red so we'll add just a bit more red and or if you model that into that and let's just see so i'm a little bit lighter so yeah that's getting closer up in there and then we'll model that in with there we go and like that that starts to set that in and i need to get lighter and I'm just going to add some water over here, loosen this up just a bit so I can grab some of that and uh, get some of this color. A little bit more yellow. He's just a touch more yellow back up over here. Get some of it. See, this is where I like. This is where you get his look. See where that's starting to dry up there just a bit. And it's easy for me to lightly take this bristle and slide that right there and get some of that nice granulated and that movement in there like that that is so much of his technique well he had to really do a consistency control we don't have to quite as much it's easier with this because uh, we can uh, we, our background is tacking up and drying a bit so we can come in there and slide some of these other colors in there and really get that nice look let me get this light edges that you get from pushing paint out like that 
And that's where he, that's how they paint. They don't paint in strokes. They paint in touches and marks and, and stuff. So we'll add a, a bit more of that purple here to this. Just a bit, a little bit more on the blue side here. And a bit of yellow. It darkens it down just a bit here. Let's come back here to this one back here. Push that in. You see that more of a, just a little bit more purpley gray. And you'll see that right there. Yeah, that's pretty good. And you'll see little touches of that. He just does a little touch of it. Just boom. There's a little touch of it. There's a little touch of it. You know, right in there. Of course, we'll adjust some of that. And then, you know, let's put a bit of that right back in there. That's pretty good. There's going to be a white one, white one. This one pulling out with more white. Let's get a little bit more yellow and white into that color. We'll pull some of that out here and uh, see it so I can keep oriented. I like to put the faces on the pansies when I paint them as soon as possible so that I can see them. You know, there's other things going on. We'll just get some of that color through there. Just dirty up some of those browns and greens and, and these colors and get kind of sketchy all through here. And just break up those tones, start to break them all up. So we got some blue. I got those, this uh, could have a bit more yellow, more defined right out here. Boom, boom, boom. Wait too long before, you just wait for a second for it to start to tack up just a bit and you'll be able to do it. With an oil, you come in here and this purple color, since it's such a, especially the phthalo that we're using is such a strong tinting strength. That means it's, it's, it's strength that it has into a mix. It'd be almost impossible to get that in there in that wet because it'd just keep disappearing against that purple. Well, you know, you let this just tack up just a bit and use some paint and you can set this right up on top here of that purple. And yeah, you set that flower in there pretty well. And that movement of that one right in there. And I'm gonna push back just a, or glaze back just an edge of that. A little bit of toned, of, uh, home burnt sienna there just drop that through and if I wanted to bring that out even more or so I would let that tack up just a bit let me just bring this up just a bit more let that tack up just a bit I like that that look through there and that you know you go you start to head to because it is a it, it's a beautiful beautiful study video as well to have but let's get this into here but recreating recreating stuff understanding and recreate see this broken this broken edges that I can get there now with this and I apply this purple and you know you'll see him come in there and apply that and then hit some of these other lights and stuff coming through and some of this movement that just gets that's what he's doing here so you'll see some of those things and you'll see like little edges of that light red that, that hit through there as, as he's taken out and he's shaping and he's looking, you know, we never put in the real fronts of uh, this. First, we'll do it kind of purpley here. Put just a bit of extender into that just to loosen up my color a bit here. Um, we never put in the front petals on, on this thing. We'll put in some big blobs here. It's turning out and down. That pansy there, little tips of that. Soften it down just a bit. There. I don't like that, that's good. This could be out a bit more. You can soften any of that down. Soften any of that down. I'm gonna take some of that light and state it back up onto that one just a bit. He's always watching those edges, so sometimes you pull out just to get that, that broken edge there. A little bit of light stroke into that. Good. And I want to paint a, 
I want to paint that. Sometimes I'll rinse out my brush here if it starts to get feel just a little bit too stiff of some of the drying paint here. But uh, let's go back up here. Burnt sienna, some of my yellows, some of these colors. This and uh, put on a little thicker paint. Some of what I did on that there before. Let's head into some yellow oxide over here. A little bit more. Just grade maybe just a touch here with some burnt sienna and some of your violety color there and yeah just a bit lighter that's kind of pretty and uh, just kind of touch through with that color uh, you know, imagine just moving that color around, moving that through. Again, that cool. Seeing where that light is hitting and yeah, nice thick white where that light is hitting, breaking those edges. There. Break those just a bit. Oh, I like that. Let's just get, let's get this edge right in here. Remember, edges advance. We always talk about that. So get those nice edges right into there as well. And uh, let's take and break that edge. Some of our yellows. A tiny bit of those. It's so easy to get too much of that thalo blue. So you always sneak up on it. One of those edges. Let's just break those in and lose those up in there. That's too light. Got into that. Get some of that violet in there. First, before I get going here, I'm just going to take the offload this brush, push it offload it so I can get to my chisel back again here. And I want to come out here like this. And he's real heavy with these. This movement of these stems right out through the air. It's pretty heavy in color. And um, I don't always like that heaviness of it. But it's reality because there's a lot of flowers here. There'd be a lot of stems. You know, I want to push some of this right up here like this. As much as I hate to cover up some of that. I want to just push this color around. Here he's very, he's very casual and playful with his leaves here. Pushing that in, you can see this really starts to light or airy up the composition here. We'll push some of that around. Uh, we'll take some of the darker version of this, a bit of the sienna into it as well here. We'll come out here. Take some, really step back on your brush. Get some brave kind of reversing strokes there. Maybe get some yellows into that. Sienna's modeled up into that. Really get kind of playful here. Around to this one that just kind of pulls through. And let's take another one of those right off here. And we're going a little purpley. Pansy coming out there. I'm going to push this one yellow one out a little further. So I had it there. I'm going to push it out. It sticks out a little further. I may have misshapen that a bit or misdrawn that. And then I'll just paint out this one. With a little, that's the nice thing about having all that modeled background. Let's paint out what you don't use. There, let's get some of our green. Let's get some of that yellow into that green here. Let's get that up. A, put in a bit of that nice light. 
edging here. Light, you know, coming through. Warm some of them up a bit. Don't over mix it too much. And that's just a bit light. So you just stroke back through it again with some green. Get some of that color back through there. There we go. Get some of that through there. That's pretty. Little bits. Little movements, little bits. Always go back and revisit your shadows. You can paint out something and raise your cast shadow a bit if you got a little too heavy or so on something. Find that. Let's go back and set that little pansy edge in there. I could go back and look at this in a um, you know another day or so, but I wouldn't. I would never paint a big area at all into it. It would be, you know, small little touches or maybe restate a little, uh, you know, more textured contrast light or something like that. I wouldn't necessarily come back and um, work big areas because it, it'll, it'll be completely and feel completely different than what you're doing right now. So, you know, it's um, dangerous. But you could put this away and in the morning or so or the next day, look at it. You might see a few things and change a few things. And the key word there is few. Don't go making any major changes to anything. You know, here I'm just adding some more contrast darks to the painting. But tomorrow I might see, oh, wow, I forgot to put this in or something like that. And I can make small little changes and stuff. But I wouldn't go in and make big, huge uh, changes of it by any matter of means because you'll just destroy the uh, the effect of it. Well, let's bring it back, just a bit back. And this is where I really like it. The paint's getting really thick, and boy, it's really easy to do stuff when that you're now out of some of that canvas and. Now there's some others, you know, that other great painters I'd I'd love to introduce you to, like Robe. I have an I have a Robe's an original painting, and he was fantastic in that he would let you know he'd tone his canvas and then he'd let some of that the edges of everything be just the tone, and then he'd paint real thick on one side, so like he painting a, a vase of flowers, it would go to almost transparent, just the, the background, nothing on it and then into texture, and it is fantastic the amount of depth that he gets very simply in his paintings, and he's not really that well known. I found him over in France, when I was over in France at studying one time, and I saw one of his paintings and then looked him up, and then I had an opportunity to buy one of his paintings, because he wasn't well as well known as some of the others, and I do have, you know, some masters and uh, Hugons and Robe now, and, and uh, I have Louis Ashton Knight and stuff in some of my collection, but I, yeah, I mean, I, it, his was just really nice. So I'm just going to put a little bit of light like he has just hitting here onto this pansy there. Uh, petal separations into the, your pansies here and there. Stuff that he looks for. You know, what happens see, is when I originally painted, I'm looking at the big, and then I just slowly start to look down further and further into the small details of the design. But I start out looking at the big, and then I just start to work down, looking at smaller stuff. Let's just put a bit of the light green like he has right in here, right? Separates those two just a bit. So I start to look at the small stuff. Start big and then start getting smaller and smaller and working it down. That's pretty darn good, I think. A little more purpley. But also watch your time. Try to increase 
and try to increase your speed, which will increase your casual, which makes it a better auto prima painting, okay? But a lot of that has to do with plans and all that kind of stuff, which we're gonna be talking about and learning more about and doing all of that. But that's a goal. Timing and speed is a goal that I want you to work towards and it'll help you, all right? Okay, so there's your first thing. If I painted a little faster, we would do probably a little better, but it gives you a, a good idea. Try it, try not to, try to just let those edges happen and everything like that. And again, like everything, if you uh, need some help or if you need any ideas or anything, just drop me a line and uh, we'll do that. And then if you don't like it one day, try painting it another day, it could be different. And your hand should look like this, okay. I'll see you on the next one when we're going to apply it and then we'll finish it up and all that kind of stuff. And we have a long ways to go still, but it's getting kind of, it's kind of fun, especially this very different from bloomers. All right. I'll see you guys on the next video.